Shannon, so welcome again. Um, thank you so much to Talk Taboo and to Quim for bringing us all together today. Um, and as you know, we are going to be talking about sex, marijuana, um, pleasure, vaginas, um, you know, a, a couple of things. Some good things are up on the list today. So um, if I can get my slides to go. So welcome again. Uh, my name is Danielle, um, aka the Sex Pod Therapist. I go by that on Instagram, uh, Twitter, but mostly on Instagram is where you'll find the good stuff. Um, and a little about me, I am a marriage and family therapy master's student, um, also a sex coach, which I mainly do online, and then also um, a sex therapy, a certified sex therapy student with the Institute for Sexuality, Enlightenment, and Education. And I will be doing <clears throat> excuse me, this presentation today um, with Kayo, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kayo Ray Nystrom. I am the CEO and co-founder of Quim. Um, Quim is a self-care line for humans with vaginas and humans without vaginas who love vaginas. Um, we make cannabis-infused vaginal topicals. This is one of our products, Smooth Operator. Um, and we have products that are available on our website for um, nationwide shipping, as well as California dispensaries. Um, and I'll just give a little shout out that we do have a 15% off promo code for everyone uh, who is participating in this amazing webinar just use taboo on our website awesome love incentives thank you so much all right so i'm going to ask you all to use the chat function again if you don't mind i'd love to learn a little bit about who we have here today so if you just want to throw out your name um, where you're joining us from and like one thing that you're hoping to learn today so go for it danielle do you want me to put mine in the chat too sure yeah i can put mine in the chat too why not let's all participate And as I'm scanning what y'all are saying, I'm trying to make sure, like check off what will be covered in here. So this is very helpful for me as well. <laughs> so thank you. Oh, cool, we have another sex therapist, hey. Awesome. A vagipreneur, I would love to learn more about that. I just learned something already, so this is going well. Great. Wow, I've never heard of that. All right. So it kind of sounds like we're, for the most part, hoping to learn about some of the same things. So I'm hoping that this will be a very informative presentation for you all. All right. OK. So. And you can keep going in the chat if you want. Of course, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. You can, this is, can be very interactive. So go for the chat, no worries. Um, but a little bit about today's agenda. Um, the first thing we had up was our welcome, wanted to meet myself, Kyle, and each other. So got that out the way. Um, and then we'll go into um, talking about the endocannabinoid system a little bit, just what it is, what it does, why we have it. Then we'll talk a little bit about um, CBD versus THC, which are as some of you may know, two of the more popular cannabinoids out of the many that there are, but they're definitely the two that we have some of the most research about. So we'll talk a little bit about those and what they have to do with sexuality. Um, and then we'll go into cannabis and communication. Um, we'll briefly touch on um, cannabis and consent, which is the point I'm trying to get at with that slide. Uh, then we'll go into cannabis, the body and sex, kind of how everything works. We'll get into pain and pleasure really quick, um, ingestion versus topicals and like what options you have for actually using cannabis when it comes to sex. And then we'll talk a little bit about some Quim products that you can try to get the job done. All right. 
So the endocannabinoid system. So what is it? Um, it's basically a biological system that um, we are all born with, and it's designed specifically to um, produce cannabinoids in the body, but also to receive them and kind of reap all the benefits that are possible from cannabinoids. So it's actually really cool. I believe, um, as far as we know, um, dogs have it, cats. I want to say most mammals, but I could be wrong because there's a lot of research that needs to be done. Um, but what it is, it's made up of endocannabinoid transmitters as well as cannabinoid receptors. So the transmitters are going to be what um, is already in your body that's creating cannabinoids. And then when you ingest cannabis in whatever way that you choose to, the receptors are there to receive it and help it work with your body. So we'll find the endocannabinoid system kind of all throughout the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. And I listed a couple of its um, basic functions. But the bottom line in that is that it's really there to um, kind of regulate your bodily function and make sure that you are are kind of running smoothly, so to speak. And the cool thing about it is, like I said, it's located in the CNS, but also in the PNS. So it really does go throughout the whole body. And the ECS really does have a hand in um, pretty much all of our bodily functions. So this is kind of a picture of where we find the CNS, or excuse me, the ECS typically, a lot of uh, abbreviations. Um, and you can see it really is throughout the whole body. So um, it was founded in the early 1990s. And what we know so far is that there are two kinds of receptors that we have. So CB1 receptors and CB2 receptors. And as you can see, um, CB2, or excuse me, CB1 receptors are, are going to be found um, kind of like in our reproductive system. Um, so those are the ones that will be interacting with cannabis for um, kind of like pain relief, um, pleasure, and, um, you know, all the other things that we're going to get into. All right. So, um, Kayo, did you have anything to add to that one? Oh, no, this one is your, your specialty. I, I'm, I, you got this. Okay. <laughs> all right. So next, CBD versus THC. So like I said, there is a bunch of um, cannabinoids um, that we're still learning about, but the two that are the most, will these slides be available after the presentation? Yeah, I can send these, I can send these to you. No problem. Um, so sorry about that. So the ones that we know the most about, um, CBD and THC. The ones that we know the most about, CBD and THC. Um, CBD is known for not being as psychoactive um, as THC. It's more so for um, the more medicinal properties that we know of. So pain relief, anti-inflammatory properties. It's really good for kind of soothing muscle tension um, as well as um, as so far we know, it's really helpful with um, kind of reducing tumors, which is why it's so popular for um, cancer treatment. So that's one of the biggest things that CBD is known for as well. Um, THC, on the other hand, that's going to be the, the cannabinoid that we know um, kind of gets us high. So that's the psychoactive property. It kind of stimulates brain activity. Um, we also do know, again, going back to cancer treatment, that it's really good for treating nausea um, and promoting appetite. So um, realistically, and we'll get into this a little bit later, the two work really well together for certain things, especially when it comes to healing. But um, when we separate the two and really look at what they're good for, these are the two, or excuse me, these two columns kind of outline what we know so far about CBD and THC. And if I'm not mistaken, I know Quim does have, um, you have both CBD and THC products, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, I think, you know, as I'm sure you're going to get into, CBD and THC are one of what, like 35 or 37 different cannabinoids within the plant, but they are mm -hmm. two of the ones that we know the most about. Um, you know, at, at Quim, we always use a broad spectrum formulation, meaning that, you know, it's not going to be an isolate, like it's not going to be just THC or just CBD. Obviously, for our CBD products, it has to have um, less than 0.3% THC volumetrically, but it has, um, you know, CBG, CBN, other uh, cannabinoids that frankly, we just don't know as much about. Um, okay. And I will, I, I'm sure Danielle is going to get into sort of like how these, you know, two different cannabinoids are, show up in your body and when it, you know, as it relates to sex and 
intimacy, um, but just calling out that at least, you know, when we're thinking about vaginal topicals, we really think of, you know, CBD has amazing anti-inflammatory properties. As you just said, it can really help relax your pelvic floor. Um, it can help decrease pain with penetration. Um, it also is, you know, less, it is still a vasodilator. It's less of a vasodilator than THC we've seen. Right. Um, but THC is a really powerful vasodilator, meaning it's going to increase blood flow to that area of your body, which will augment your natural lubrication. Um, so regardless of where you're at in your life, maybe you're menopausal, maybe you're just someone who doesn't get super wet, and that's actually not indicative of your arousal. See, I think they can both be super helpful, but they just, they're a little bit different. Exactly. Thank you. All right. So, all that being said, um, I'm wondering what you all think. Um, would you say which can which cannabinoid that we just talked about between THC and CBD would be better for managing pain during sex, and which would be better for enhancing pleasure? So, let's go to the chat function one more time, if y'all don't mind. I'm um, just wondering what you think and why. Oops. That's a great point, Kaya. Yeah, really does depend. A lot of yeah, a lot of it will depend. <laughs> it depends, but. All of them. Definitely can make the argument there. <laughs> All right. Thanks, y'all. All right. So we're going to hold on to those answers because we are going to come back to that. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Okay. So cannabis and communication really quick. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is because I feel like it's not a thing that is really talked about and it's kind of like, like it's just pot, like who cares, what's the big deal? Like you're not gonna know, but that's really the, the, another reason I wanted to bring this up is because I think that it's important for everyone who's involved in whatever um, sex is about to go down for everyone to know like where everyone is. Um, just so no surprises come up. Um, you don't know what kind of experience your partner has had with cannabis and maybe they don't want to be in another situation where the person they're going to have sex with is high for whatever reason. Um, maybe they themselves have had a bad experience when they smoked and had sex and things didn't go well. So you just never really want to like be a trigger for anyone in that sense. So a really easy way to disclose that would be, hey, um, I just smoked a joint before this. Are you cool with that? Like, I'm still down if you are. And go from there. Um, but yeah, again, most important thing is to make sure that sex is supposed to be fun for everybody involved. So you just want everyone to be aware of where you are, um, mentally speaking. Right. Yeah, and just to take back on this, I think, um, you know, when it comes to vaginal topicals, um, it's very unlikely that you will feel any psychoactive um, effects from them. If you use them rectally, the chances are higher that you will have some type of psychoactive feelings um, or psychoactive experiences. And we always recommend that people first try these products alone, because I think that consent is something that of course you navigate with someone else, but you really empower yourself to show up for a partnered conversation way better if you have gone through it once solo and then you know see how you feel about it maybe it like you know opens you up in this way that feels incredibly vulnerable and very pleasurable but maybe that's something you don't want to share with someone who you're having sex with for the very first time or you don't know them as well and so i think you know when you're using particularly like the C thc products but i'd say either one you know whenever you're introducing a new plant or plant-based ingredient into, you know, one that does 
have psychoactive experience, you know, psychoactive effects. Um, I think it's good to start, you know, do it for a solo and then you just, you come to the table with a much better language and way more agency for like what feels right for you. Exactly. Kind of said it better myself. All right. So now we'll talk a little bit about how cannabis works on the brain and the body and what that has to do with sex. So um, typically when you ingest cannabis, um, whether it's going to be smoking it, eating it, um, or even just using a topical, what happens is the cannabinoids are going to bind to the receptors in the endocannabinoid system and that kind of just sets it off, um, starts your neurons firing. So especially when you smoke, um, that is basically the reason for kind of the increased brain activity that some people have, um, but it also could be the cause of just intense relaxation. Um, so that's kind of how it works with the endocannabinoid system um, in the brain specifically. Now with the body, um, it can react differently in different parts of the body. Like Kaya said earlier, um, THC especially is a very strong vasodilator. So that means that it's going to uh, promote blood flow to whatever area, especially if you're using a topical. And that's why vaginal topicals are so cool because it can increase blood flow to that area, which is gonna increase lubrication, um, hopefully reduce um, muscle tightness if that's an issue for you. And that is going to be kind of what opens up the pathways to more pleasure. So when you're having sex, um, can the cannabis working on your brain and the body, what it can do um, after all is said and done is increase feelings of euphoria. So it's going to make things feel a little bit better. Um, hopefully in some cases it can reduce anxiety, but in some other cases it can heighten anxiety. So that's another, that goes back to what Kaya was saying. It's a really good idea to kind of practice or not practice, but um, ingest whatever you're going to by yourself first, just so you know that, um, or just so you know what your limits are, if that makes sense. Um, and it can also intensify certain sensations, like I said, so that's going to go back to that more pleasurable feeling, more euphoric feeling, and hopefully reduced pain. Did you want to add something? Oh, all right, perfect. <laughs> all right, and really quickly, um, Cannabis, I just want to make it known that we aren't the first ones over here in America to experiment with cannabis and sexuality. For centuries, cannabis has been a huge part of sexual wellness for uh, quite a few cultures. Um, so especially in India and in China, tantric sex is a huge tradition. It's been around for, well, tantra itself has been around for centuries, um, but tantric sex is kind of just one part of it. And what tantra is kind of a watered down definition. It's, it's kind of, it's a way to really increase uh, like your mindfulness and um, just like being in the moment with your partner, whatever you're doing. So a lot of meditation or even just by yourself. So a lot of meditation, um, a lot of grounding and really just being like, like, just like achieving a level of oneness that you wouldn't achieve normally. So with tantric sex, um, you don't really always focus on orgasming. Um, you're more focused on being in the moment with your partner, um, which is where meditation and everything comes in. And in India and China, they've used cannabis as kind of, um, kind of like a, a tool to achieve that oneness and that introspection. Um, also in Eastern Europe, they've used it as an aphrodisiac. They put it in their foods um, or they'll smoke it. Um, and I, believe they use a lot of hemp, like they make topicals and stuff for, for, from hemp, which they've done for centuries as well. And even in Uganda for centuries, um, cannabis has been used kind of as a remedy for erectile dysfunction, which is always really interesting to me because there are a lot of studies that kind of link um, cannabis to infertility and to causing erectile dysfunction. So I just wanted to highlight um, some of the other places in the world where um, cannabis has been really used and kind of hailed as a sexual like a really great sexual tool uh, all right so pain and pleasure so that question that we asked earlier so that was kind of a trick question um because what we often see um in a lot of literature and a lot of research is that cbd should be the one that we go to for pain relief and thc should be the one that we go to for pleasure and it is really true that um, when you isolate the two they do have all these really great um, properties. So CBD, like we said, can block pain receptors and that's what's gonna make it a little bit better for managing pain. It can relax muscles. Um, so, so that's gonna be great for if you have um, 
pain during penetration, um, you would you would think that you'd want to try um, like just a plain CBD product for that. And then, uh, of course, with the supporting blood flow, it's not as much of a vasodilator as THC, but it still is. And that is where we see um, the increased lubrication coming from. And then on the other hand, THC, again, a greater vasodilator than CBD um, and also blocks pain receptors and pr boosts creativity. But what we also know is that TBD, THC, excuse me, and CBD work really well together um, because of something called the entourage effect. And what that means is that CBD and THC kind of work together to regulate each other. Um, and I believe that this is kind of a source for a lot of debate, um, like within the cannabis community, because a lot of these um, kind of like homegrown um, strains or like genetically modified strains that are kind of designed to have a lot more THC and like not as much CBD and people might not respond as well to it. Well, that's because THC and CBD are supposed to work a little bit better together. So it's, it does kind of uh, change the effects that cannabis could have for somebody when it's way more THC than CBD or vice versa. Did you want to add anything to that, Kaya? No, I think you got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Perfect. All right. Yes. Yeah, so um, now what we know is that the two kind of, like I said, work together. Um, so let's say um, the THC can work to um, increase blood flow to the area and then the CBD is going to be working to relax um, your muscles. So like, let's say you're someone who has issues with pain during penetration, you really want a product that's going to be a little bit more balanced to bring you all the possible effects that, um, that could be possible. Um, so yeah, that's all I have for that slide. All right, so ingestion uh, versus topical treatments. Go, uh, I think a, a poll just popped up. Curious what your preference is um, for ingesting marijuana. So we have smoking weed, CBD oils, edibles. And I know someone, um, I believe someone asked a question about edibles that I'm gonna try to address later. Mostly have smokers, I can relate, yeah. I mean, all of the above, really. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's exactly. It's day, all of the above <laughs> at a different, different times of day. Yeah, and they're all so different. Like, yes, it is a, a lot of the time you are going to get that psychoactive effect, but I mean, smoking versus edibles to me is very, very different. Totally different. Yeah. All right. So ingestion versus um, topical. So when you're ingesting, um, the marijuana is, it's going to hit your brain first, obviously, um, and it's going to, it can be, um, it can take a little bit longer to act, but a lot of the time smoking is gonna be the fastest way to get any kind of effects. But the thing with smoking is that it goes straight to your brain and it kind of, it, it does what it's gonna do on your brain before it can get to like anywhere else in your body. So if you are thinking, you're trying to find out like what's gonna be the best way to ingest it when it comes to sex, that really is gonna depend on how you are when you smoke. Um, so maybe taking edibles might be a little bit easier for you. But the thing to keep in mind with edibles, a lot of people experience what's known as a body high versus a head high when they take edibles. So maybe you don't want to be like kind of in slump mode when you're trying to have sex. But again, it all depends on, you know, knowing your body and how you are with edibles versus ingestion. Um, now with topicals, the great thing about topicals is is going to be fast acting to whatever area you're applying that topical to. So it's kind of bypassing the brain and going straight to that area that you're putting it on, which is going to be, in my opinion, if you're trying to relax um, your muscles for penetration or something like that, that's going to be the better bet, in my opinion, um, because it's a little bit more localized, which again means that it's going to act just on that area. So if you're applying, let's say, some kind of uh, infused lube to your vagina, China, you're going to see the effects um, first there before you would, in, if any at all, in the rest of your body. So that's kind of the difference between the two. If you're a person that doesn't really want to have like the psychoactive effects and you just want your body to kind of relax into whatever you're doing, topicals might be a little bit better of an option for you. Did you want to add anything? You're, you're muted. I'm sorry. <laughs> Something else, you know, that's, I think, 
for the majority of topicals, um, you won't feel there's, you're not going to feel a psychoactive effect. So particularly if, you know, there's someone in your family who is, who has some like really acute pain, maybe got in a car accident or has chronic back pain, um, but is really sort of anti-cannabis, they're, they're, or they're really anti- getting high, they're not interested in that. Um, I know for a lot of the you know, older people in my family, whenever, if they have psoriasis or arthritis or back pain, a topical can be a really great way to introduce someone to cannabis in a way that will not um, get them high. And can help them, I think can help people understand that um, cannabis is first and foremost a medicine. It has always been a plant-based medicine. Um, it didn't become a drug the way that we talk about that um, until you know the U.S. government really wanted a way to, um, you know, make to ban racial groups, to ban black people or Latino people. It wasn't about you know we made it out to be this scary drug, this reefer madness, and it had everything to do with um, racialized war on drugs and very little to do with the fact that cannabis has been used by for thousands of years from everywhere, from India, China, Africa, to the Queen of England, Queen Victoria taking tinctures to help with menstrual cramps. Like this is something you could buy in your local apothecary in the 1890s in you know, a tiny little saloon town in Montana. And it wasn't until, you know, probably the early maybe like 1920s, 1915, that we really started to vilify these drugs for their, you know, for their more recreational attributes. But I do think topicals, you know, topicals can be so important in helping realize and helping people realize that this is a plant medicine first. Right, exactly. All right, so now we're going to get to some Quim products that can be great for everything that we just talked about. Okay. All right. And you can take it away, Kyle. <laughs> um, um, well, I do want to probably be cognizant of the fact that a lot of people um, don't live in California, so I don't want to spend too much time talking about night moves or oh yes, um, but those are available in about 100 dispensaries throughout California. Um, night moves, I think of as not just helpful for sex, but actually as a proactive vaginal health supplement. Um, it has a little bit of Damiana in it. Damiana is an ancient aphrodisiac herb. Um, it's been its use has been dated back to Mayan civilization. It has shown to help increase the frequency of orgasms as well as um, increase vaginal elasticity. Uh, tea tree, we use a very low dose of it. It's a strong essential oil. It's an antimicrobial, antibacterial. Um, and oh yes, is our aloe-based serum, um, which means it's compatible with latex condoms. And then on the CBD side, um, Smooth Operator is a CBD version, you know, the CBD version of oh yes, I have it right here. Um, this is probably my go-to. It's really, um, it's aloe, it's CBD. I have sometimes, I think I carry a lot of stress in my pelvic floor and in my back. And when we're just sitting at our computers all day and not walking around anywhere, um, I've definitely been going to this one on a more routine basis. I also will use this one um, when I'm on my period. I'll put some on the tip of a tampon and put it in and it can really help with cramps. Um, Happy Clam Everyday Oil uh, is sort of think of it like an eye cream for your vagina. Um, not necessarily in a um, cosmetic sense, but more in a daily care sense. Um, so Happy Clam has tea tree, damiana, Afri apricot kernel oil, um, which is really high in alpha lympaic acid, which can help skin heal faster. Um, I use this one whenever I get out of the shower. Also after, it can be really grateful, a really great um, post-sex if, you know, sometimes I have, some post-sex inflammation, AKA puffy taco, my, my, my favorite euphemism. Um, so it can be really helpful for alleviating that. I remember, you know, before we developed these products, sometimes after like a really great romp, I would literally get like an ice pack and I would like cool myself off. And I think, you know, everyone's different. Um, I think using more lube is always good, but also having something that can help um, help that really sensitive part of your body sort of come back down to homeostasis, which is what the endocannabinoid system does. So um, yeah, those are our products. And like I said, we, if you use, um, yes, for CBD products, not THC, because we are not able to sell those on our website, um, use the code taboo and you'll get 15% off. 
Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, of course. All right. So that's pretty much everything we had uh, content wise. Um, so we did a quick run through of the EndoConnect system. We talked about CBD and THC really quick, um, cannabis and consent, just something to think about for the next time. Um, and then the body and sex with cannabis, how everything works, pain and pleasure, and then Quinn products. So does anyone have any questions? I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, hi, my name is Oslin Cummings Cave. Um, hi. I put a little bit in the chat box. Um, about my um, company. I have, I have a company called Flower Box. Okay. And we have, we create plant-based um, scented oils and other natural um, products. And it's specifically for your vulva. So mm -hmm. it's your um, external private area. Right. Um, so I'm new to cannabis and um, in the research phase, because I'll be making, I'm going to be developing two new products that I want to use um, CBD in. Okay. So um, my question is really, um, I've been Googling a lot. <laughs> so um, for uh, Kaya, is that how you say your name? Yeah. Okay. Um, so when you, so what did you use to create your, like, what did you use as guides to create your products? Because, you know, figuring out how much CBD you should put in there and all that stuff that has to go into making sure, you know, the product, it, you know, it's a good product that you're putting out on the market. So do you have any advice on that front? Yeah. So what I would recommend doing and the way that we figured out, you know, the ratios for pretty much everything, I mean, starting with the CBD, like how potent does this need to be, um, really was just, you know, cooking it up ourselves and trying it and giving it to our friends and saying, Hey, will you try this? Okay. Will you try this one? Will you take this serve? You know, I'd give friends like a little bag of five little five samples. And I'd be like, I'll buy you dinner or like, I'll buy you drinks. If you promise to have sex five times this weekend and fill out the survey afterward. And we really, you know, and of course I was doing it. My business partner was doing it. And, you know, people have different experiences, which is, I think, one of the hardest things about developing sexual wellness products, products in the cannabis or CBD industry, um, because of the experiences are so varied. But at least for us, we started to see that, you know, after a few try, you know, you can, it wasn't like to completely split. It was like, generally people liked this certain, you know, this tended to be, you know, the best potency that helped, you know, relax their pelvic floor. But if you put in too much CD, CBD, some people get experienced some, like something of a numbing sensation, which will make it a lot harder to climax. So it is sort of that fine line. And I would say, you know, because obviously if you're trying to make these formulas now, you won't be able to buy the ingredients at scale for the best cost. So what I would recommend is, um, you know, do some research online for two, you could even get like two very clean CBD oils, like a tincture, something that is okay and has been, you know, has been gotten the okay for um, ingestion internally. And, you know, is using a carrier oil that you feel comfortable with, maybe whether it's MCT oil, um, but, you know, try to two different sources and then make, you know, a couple of batches at different potencies. And, get people to try them. And if you don't have someone to try them, try them yourself and keep like really detailed notes. And then, especially if you're not going to have a bunch of other people try them, make sure you try them each sample a couple of times, because there's so many other factors, you know, whether or not you're having a good day, whether you're at a three today or a seven today, whether or not you're hungry or tired or had too much wine last night that can impact you know, I think we forget, I don't know, when Danielle was talking about the entourage effect and how that relates to cannabis, I was thinking about the entourage effect and how it applies to everything in our life. You know, like I could watch a movie one day and hate it, but maybe I was just really in a bad mood or like it reminded me of something that hurt my feelings. And then I could watch it the next day and be like, that's the best movie ever. And so especially if you don't have the ability to get a bunch of people to try it, just make sure you're trying the different ones as much as you can. Does that, is, was that helpful? Absolutely. Thank you so much for that information. And that's exactly what I pl plan on doing. So thank you. 
and you can totally, you know, I, like you can get those tinctures. It's a much lower cost way. Like let's say, you know, you could buy a really high quality CBD tincture, two, you know, one for $40, one for maybe $60. And of course that's, you know, when you start producing these products at scale, they'll be a lot less expensive, but you know, you're paying for the individual packaged version. So I think it's a, it's a low cost way to test at home. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I saw someone asked in the chat what a tincture is. So a tincture is basically like an extraction of um, like cannabis oil or product. Um, and it's just like a really like super concentrated um, way to ingest cannabis. Do you want to say anything more about that, Kaya? You might know a little bit more about that. Yeah, I, I know that historically tinctures, um, like the, uh, you know, I think originally, you know, back when Queen Victoria was taking a tincture, um, tinctures were plants that had been concentrated in some type of alcohol. And mm -hmm. so you would um, either some type of grain alcohol, who knows what kind of alcohol. Um, now, I think when we talk about tinctures, at least if you're going to a dispensary or you're buying a CBD tincture, um, it's a lot more likely that they, it's an infused oil, probably mm -hmm. an MCT oil or some other type of vegetable oil. Um, but it's, it's a lot hard. I know at least in California, um, when all of the regulations passed in 2018, I'm, I'm pretty sure one of the things that were banned was, were tinctures and alcohol, which there was a lot of pushback on because there is a fair amount of evidence that shows that it's a very efficient way to get the cannabinoids into your system. But, mm -hmm. you know, they didn't people, they didn't want make people making, um, what was it? I used to make it in college, like green dragon or something. You'd like oh, soak God. all your weed stems <laughs> and like a bottle yeah. of cheap vodka and then just barf all over the floor for the next eight hours. <laughs> when you said that about um, like the earliest tinctures were of alcohols, that's the first thing I thought of was my friend making green dragon with like Everclear. So yeah, it's just reckless. Yeah, don't ever, don't need to do that again, but you know. Who, know, who, who knew, little did we know that we were actually consuming an old form of, <laughs> this is different, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, all right, so looking at the chat, Mary Ellen, um, I see you have a question about cannabinoids profile. So I don't know if you wanna, um, you can unmute yourself and ask, or if you wanted to throw it in the chat. Can you hear me? Yes, hello. Hi. Uh, yeah, I was really, uh, like I, I live in Canada, so we have uh, we have um, a lot of options, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a few stores out here that uh, put a lot of work into kind of like profiling the different uh, um, the terpenes, and um, you know when I talk to the the the. Um, people who work there, they don't seem all that knowledgeable about which terpenes to kind of look out for for certain effects with sex. Mm -hmm. And so, but I like, I feel them because I've been feeling them for, for years mm -hmm. uh, that some, uh, that some strains of weed will cause me to like get very vaginally dry and then others are very wet. And then, so some are like, some are obviously very sleepy, uh, mm -hmm. which is not the effect that I'm looking for. Um, and, and while I, I have an idea that there's a difference between uh, sativa and indica for me, what my preference is, I was just wondering if I could like deep, dig a little bit deeper and understand which um, terpenes might be more uh, directed at those, those different feelings and wondered if you had any like go-tos for those. Sure. So the first thing I thought of when you um, mentioned like how the, how in Canada, like they don't put a lot of like uh, stock into that. I'm wondering, like, as far as I know, there's not a lot of like research about yeah. like specifically, you know, terpenes and stuff like that. So I guess we do kind of just have to go off of what we know already. Mm -hmm. um, so that being said, like specific terpenes, I'm not even sure about. But when it comes to indica versus sativa, that kind of goes back to what I was saying about how like, um, when you take edibles, like you might experience more of that like body high, like slump, like in the couch. So, um, and the way a lot of people remember um, indica, indica and sativa is indica is like in the couch. <laughs> so you might not want to um, 
you know, ingest a, an indica heavy um, cannabis, whatever it is that you're taking, whether it's an edible or you're just smoking or um, X, Y, and Z. Um, if you want to be a little bit more creative, um, a little bit more like into what's happening, but you also have to be careful to not be too much into in your head, um, then sativa might be the way to go. But as far as um, like what it's going to do to your body specifically, that's going to depend on like kind of your body, um, how much you're taking, um, kind of like what Kaya was saying, just like the entourage effect of life. Like you would have to really like experiment with that uh, mm -hmm. specific strain or just with indica heavy strains or indica um, like isolated uh, topicals, whatever it is you're using, you'd have to kind of experiment because the research is not really out there. So mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I don't know if that really answers your question, but that's no, one it just confirms it confirms what I thought, <laughs> which yeah. is like there's not a lot of research. There, yeah, there really isn't. But that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Yeah. Um, did you have any other questions, Mary Ellen? Oh, you're unmuted. Um. Uh, no, I just had some questions, but that got that about shipping to Canada um, oh. that I'm interested in, and I had a kind of a question about like um, how to make your own kind of homemade <laughs> lube if, if I had to experiment with that too. And like, um, yeah. but yeah, as you mentioned, most of the, um, the edible, the tinctures are oil-based. So you don't really have to worry about like accidentally thinking about like how to not apply alcohol to your vagina, which sounds like a really bad idea. So yeah, make sure it's oil-based. Thanks. Yeah, of course. And I, I think I tried to private message you. Um, I don't know how to say this terpene, but generally when I'm looking for um, strains, it's, I, I don't even know, it's caryophyllene. It's sort of like a cinnamon black pepper scent. It's like, that's sort of the smell profile. Um, I've, there's a few dispensaries that I've been to in the past that have, um, at least you know in San Francisco that have real that really are excited about terpenes, mm -hmm. um, and so I did. I was able to to identify that one. Mm -hmm. um, I also I think it's the you know I think it's linalool that's sort of lavender that's you know reminds me of lavender. Um, you know that can be a little sleepy, but it's not like knock you out sleepy. I think for mm -hmm. me it's relaxing. Um, and in terms of making your own um, you know an oil based cannabis lube at home. If you have a crock pot, you can do it in a crock pot, you can do mm -hmm. it, you can decarb, um, you know, so your stems, your trim, whatever you have around. I think Canada has pretty strict testing rules and regulations. So that's always something, you know, if you're getting, you know, a bag of trim from a friend, um, which to be clear, that's how I started making <laughs> our first products. You know, I knew a guy, I got some trim, I was making this um, product. Obviously that's no longer the most efficient way to make it, um, but something that we found in some of the first, you know, before we had even brought the product to market, um, we were getting it tested because obviously if you're gonna put this in your vagina, you wanna know that um, you're not putting a bunch of pesticides in there. Mm -hmm. And we found out that even though my friend was like, oh yeah, it's totally organic. Like we don't use any pesticides. I was like, okay, then why is like red ant killer number five in my weed lube? <laughs> um, so I think if you're getting it from shops in Canada, I, I believe that the regulations are pretty strict around um, testing for heavy metals and pesticides. Mm -hmm. um, but just know that when you're making an oil, you are making a concentration. So if there's anything, you know, if there are any pesticides or heavy metals, um, because cannabis is a bioaccumulator, meaning that, you know, you could cannabis pulls out the toxins in the ground, which it's, you know, you can, which is why it's really important to have, you know, sustainable soil practices for cannabis. Um, side note, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I would just say, make sure you're, you're, whatever you're using, whatever your base product that you're going to be making the oil with um, is definitely been tested and is free of pesticides and herbicides. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Um, all right, someone asked in the chat, what is the difference between a topical and a lube? Kayo, do you want to answer that? Because I feel like you would. Yeah, sure. Um, so a topical, you know, when we talk about topicals, you can put them on your back, on your face, on your vagina, on your vulva, or in your vagina, on your vulva. Um, so I would say topical just means you're putting it somewhere on your skin. Um, a lubricant is 
up until very recently, at least in the US, was a term that was actually regulated by the FDA um, as cannabis and is still um, illegal on the federal level, we do not call any of our products lubes because it is a, you know, it's a, you know, we technically can't. Um, but lubricants, I believe the medical definition is some type of serum um, that decreases friction. Which would also make sense while you have like, you can go to the Jiffy Lube to get your oil changed. Right. There's too much friction in your car. Right. Um. All right, thank you. So next question, um, do we have experience with indica versus sativa-based uh, THC? Um, I personally don't have a lot of experience with like only indica or only sativa. Like I'm probably like one time in my life I've had like a sativa heavy whatever it was, but it for me personally, because I don't have a medical card or anything like that, like it would, like there's a lot of like, work that goes into getting just like indica uh, heavy or just sativa heavy. So Kai, I don't know if you have any personal experience with that. Yeah, I know at least in California, I think there's a movement away from thinking of things as indica or sativa because at this point, you know, if you got a blue dream at a shop in LA and then you try to get a blue dream in San Francisco or somewhere else, it's not the same blue dream. It's not, exactly. it doesn't have like the same genetics. It was, you know, one could be indoor, one could be outdoor. Um, one could be grown in a facility outside of Palm Springs and one is grown in Humboldt County. So there are all these other factors that will impact, you know, the effect of, you know, that strain. Um, and I do think more and more, you know, if you are buying cannabis, probably anywhere in the US, it is, it's a hybrid. It's very, exactly. you know, it's, it's a, and it might be an indica leaning hybrid or a sativa leaning hybrid. Um, but I don't even know, I don't even really know how they are measured. You know, I think it, the plants look a little bit different. So, you know, a granddaddy purple is going to look very different than a Jack Herrer. Um, right. You know, the granddaddy purple, it's like thicker and like sort of shorter and a sativa will be like a longer mm -hmm. leafier plant. Um, but yeah, I, at least in my experience in working in the industry in California for the past, you know, four years, are, I think people are starting to move away from those terms. And that's why you have so many products that actually just, instead of saying, this is an indica vape pen, they'll say, this is a relaxing vape pen. This is a sleep vape pen. This is a exercising vape pen or something like that. Right. And yeah, where I'm in, where I am in Florida, like I said, I don't have a medical card. So um, as far as I know, pretty much everything is a hybrid. I don't have the luxury of like, you know, being able to di differentiate between the two. So, yeah. Um, okay, next question. Um, do you have experience working with RSO? And I'm thinking you mean Rick Simpson oil? Um, and I don't personally. Do you, Kaya? I do not. No. Okay. So, yeah. Um, okay, do we have any other questions? Hi, can I ask one other quick question? I'm sorry to... Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so in my research, um, I found that um, the powder uh, CBD uh, product is a little more economical than the oil. So um, when you're making, when you're creating your products, um, do you have, have you seen any, you know, big difference in the oil? or using the powder, or you don't have um, experience? I, you know, I've actually never, I'm not on mute. Okay, yeah. Um, I've actually never used a powder. Um, I would, I think, I don't see anything necessarily against using a powder. I'd probably want to know what all the ingredients are. And I think probably what I would, the more important, like more important than it being a powder or an oil would be that it is a broad spectrum distillate so that it's not just like a CBD isolate because I think there are all these other cannabinoids that are in the plant that um, contribute to that entourage effect. And I wouldn't, uh, you know, I think, um, yeah, if the powder was just a CBD isolate, I don't know if you would get the same effects, but you might. Okay, great. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> Great questions. All right. Um, okay. Just looking through the chat one more time. 
I think someone had a question about safety, but I can't find it. So I don't know if you want to just unmute yourself and ask the question. Or maybe I can find it real quick. Or hold on, we gonna find it. All right, well, while I'm looking for it, I have a question for you all. It's a trivia question. And whoever gets the question right, we, or Talk Taboo, will send you a Quinn product for free. So first person to put the right answer, or because it, it's a number answer, so we'll say within, within 10 uh, above the answer, within 10 below the answer, then you'll get it right. So how many cannabinoids are there that we know of? Go ahead and put it in the chat. You can't Google it. Honor system. Yes. <laughs> and I'm going to look for that question in the meantime. I found the question. Uh, All right, we already have the winner. Um, it was actually the first person to answer. So Fernanda, the right answer is 113. So you are the winner, yay, thank you. <laughs> so um, we'll get your information from you and we'll go ahead and send you that product. Thanks for playing guys. Um, all right, so we have one more question. I didn't find the question. How safe are CBD lubricants MCT based? And Kaya, if you don't mind, I'm gonna let you answer that one because you make these products. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think our products are all third party tested. They are um, reviewed by gynecologists. Um, they're formulated by a PhD pharmacist. So to that effect, I think it's, they're very safe. Um, depending on your you know, health history or if you're breastfeeding or if you're trying to get pregnant, I would say do more research and talk to your doctor about it. The thing, you know, the thing about cannabis uh, being scheduled as it is right now in the United States means that there isn't a lot of scientifically backed research coming out on, um, on, you know, particularly vaginal cannabis or cannabis topicals. Um, but I do think that, you know, compared to, a lot of other products that are marketed to people with vaginas. Um, when I think about how many people are using Astroglide or KY, which are glycerin-based lubricants, um, glycerin is a metabolic byproduct of sugar. Therefore, if you're susceptible to any bacterial or fungal infections, you know, you're just feeding the bacteria. Um, I would consider them to be a lot more healthy, uh, or sorry, a lot safer. But, you know, I think I'm not a doctor, so to be clear, I can't give any medical advice. Um, and I think it's a really, it's a conversation that you should have with your doctor um, and that you should do your own research and make your own decision for on. Totally agree. Yeah, that kind of, it just goes back to um, number one, making sure that the product is completely tested, like Kyle just said, and again, knowing like what's gonna work with your body, because what's safe for one person might not necessarily be safe for you, so discernment um all right so we have time for one more question i think um all right can you use a topical and smoke uh, or take an edible so um the short answer is yes you can um, <laughs> longer answer is again you have to know what's going to work for you so personally um and you know, it also depends on like what your goal is. Like if you have a goal in mind, like what you're trying to achieve. Um, if you want to go ahead and relax and then use the topical for more of a concentrated localized um, effect, then why not? Um, but if you, um, if you aren't the type of person that likes to um, be high while you're having sex or what have you, then maybe just stick with the topical. Um, yeah, I don't see any reason why you can't or like why it would be unsafe for you to do so. It's just a matter of, again, knowing how all that stuff is going to work with your body um, and how it's going to work with your body while you're having sex. Did you want to add anything to that? No? Okay. All right. Perfect. Um, all right. So I think that's pretty much all the time we have. I, I want to say thank you so much to everyone for coming. Thank you to Mia and thank you to Kyle and for all of you. This was great. I really appreciate it. Any thank last you, words? Danielle, it was so cool. Of course. And yeah, really happy to do this whenever. <laughs> Thanks for hosting it. It was really interesting. Of course. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, Fernanda will get your information before you leave. So if you want to 
um, hang around. Everyone else, um, thank you so much. Oh, let me just make sure our social medias get out there. So yeah, again, I'm the sex pot therapist on Instagram. Um, Kayo, if you want to go ahead and plug yourself. Yeah, we are um, at It's Quim. I'll just put it in the chat. Yeah, I'll do that too. All right. And don't forget, use code TABOO um, for 15% off your Quinn products after this. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Right. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. All right. Fernando. Oh, awesome. Someone just placed an order. That's awesome. Okay. Fernanda, I'm going to send you my email address.